What's up guys, it's TRT77 here with the finals of UPA Showdown Season 1. Uh, this week we are taking on Map of Justice. We've come full circle guys. So our last loss in this league was week 5 and it was to Map of Justice. It was at a time where we dropped a 2 and 3 but we haven't dropped a game in this league since then. Um, both of us have made changes to our team since then and that's why I don't think the rematch matters as much because First and foremost, we made drastic changes, obviously, if you've noticed from our previous videos. Um, but he also made a few changes. He swapped out um, um, Diggersby and Lycanroc and another Mon for Rhyperior, Gyarados Mega and Hat Rain. Now, uh, just looking at his team, his team is really offensive and it's going to be quite difficult to really, to realistically have a check to every Mon in his team is quite difficult. But for me, it's more it more comes down to being able to take the pressure on every single turn is probably my best option here. Um, I have got to start with my Scizor set, which is a very defensive Scizor. It's mainly here to check Gyarados Mega because Gyarados Mega is a real problem for my team. So plus one Gyarados Mega will kill Feeny always with Power Whip, which is a huge problem. And uh, its stabs just do so much to everything else on my team. And uh, so uh, my main way of checking it is between Scissor, Mega and Choice Scarf Rotom. Choice Scarf Rotom will outspeed it at plus one and uh, will, will, it's a, well, after Rocks it'll definitely kill with Leaf Storm if it's Mega or it'll kill with T-Bolt. Um, with the, with Scissor in general, uh, the whole point of it being that defensive is one, it takes better hits from Galarian Zapdos if it's Choice Scarf, even though Choice Band is really hard for me to check. Um, it takes better hits from Choice Scarf and basically it makes it a roll heavily in my favor if he flinches me with Waterfall. Like I can take two Waterfalls thereby reducing my overall rate to like in, it, it's meant for like a worst case scenario you know if I lose Scarf Rotom he's at plus one plus one and at that point if he clicks Waterfall going for the flinch and if he gets the flinch I can take another Waterfall and still kill him with Bug Bite. But overall, Scizor still does a lot of damage because it is still adamant nature and it's still really good in this matchup. Next up, we have Gliscor Coma Scale. The Gliscor, again, quite a defensive set. Impish nature, Gliscor is always quite defensive. Um, it, it's got enough speed to outspeed uh, both Dragonite and Gyarados, which is what my intention is to just toxic either of those Mons. Um, being able to toxic them would be my best option because in that, in that scenario, um, I would be able to prevent significant setup, at least to the point where one, I, I have Toxic and Protect here. I have Protect mainly because Banded um, Brave Bird will always two hit KOS from Zapdos Gallop. So with the Toxic Orb recovery, we will be able to take two brand, Banded Brave Birds. So that is the that's the main point of having Protect on this Glyce set. The other thing is, I just couldn't figure out a move. Like if I had Facade and if I had a slower Glyce score, if he was sub Gyarados, I was pretty much toast because he would come in, intimidate me, and I wouldn't be able to break sub. So that's why the faster Gliscor is here, so that even if he intimidates me, I can get the Toxic off on Gyarados and not let it set up for free. Uh, next up, we have got Scarf Rotammo. Really basic set. It's it's a choice Scarf Revenge Killer, basically just for Gyarados. And uh, it sort of does, it, it can just Volt Switch on Dragonite. It doesn't really do much to Dragonite because Dragonite's Dragonite, but. Um, Shadow Ball does a decent amount to Aegislash. Uh, Leaf Storm is the, its best stab as always, but again, I'm kind of hesitant to click, click Leaf Storms if you know about my history with Leaf Storms on this channel. Um, and uh, basic set, very basic set. The AD HP is just to make sure we live one hit, if I'm not mistaken, one hit from Specs Aegislash. Um, moving on, we have Thanos Weaval coming in with the Life Orb set. I really wanted to run Choice Band, but I just could not bring myself to do it because of the number of mons he's got, the number of setup threats he's got. Um, Life Orb I shard is here, obviously for the Dragonite and for the Zapdos Galar. Even though like I would need a few switch-ins or rocks realistically on Zapdos Galar to kill it if it was Scarf, but if it was Scarf, I can I can check with Scizor. So what I'm hoping is if he's banded, I can triple axle him out, like just run through it. Uh, knockoff obviously is really good stab against this team. Low kick after rocks will kill a noble Gyarados, which I don't think he would be, but 
you know, again, can't let Gyarados get a free turn. That is the whole point of everything. That's why we even have Rocks and Gliscor, even though, yeah, like, we probably could have had another move on that, or even, like, ran Subtoxic Protect for insurance. Um, having Rocks on that enables us to get Chip on Gyarados if he keeps himself from getting Mega, which, which I'm assuming he will because Intimidate is so useful against me. Uh, last two sets we have uh, Victini and Tapu Fini. Victini here is a special set. This was a really bulky Victini once again, mainly because I'm just trying to catch him off guard. Will O Wisp will prevent Dragonite from keeping multi scale, will prevent Gyarados from being a threat at plus one. It'll prevent, uh, uh, it's a good switch, it, it's a good move for Bomber Snow on the switch in. Um, it's a, uh, it, it, like, in, in any given scenario where he goes hard at Bomber Snow expecting like a bolt strike or something. It's a very good, it's just like, it prevents like Scarf EQ a Bomber Snow because I've seen him run Scarf a Bomber Snow this season. And um, it's good for Hyperior. It's, it's, it's just overall, Willow was really good in this matchup against this team. Glaciate's obviously there for the, for the, for the Dragonite, I beg your pardon. Grass Knot for the Gyarados. Grass Knot actually two shots, all three of his water types. And uh, Blue Flare is just Stab. Uh, does a lot because we're modest 188, which is more than uh, a timid max. And uh, I didn't really see the need for speed because again, if you look at his team, he's got quite a slow team. It's just Zapdos, Galar, and Stami that break 100. So I didn't see the need to have too much speed. It outspeeds the Gyarados, and that's about enough for me. And uh, our last Marlins builder, guys, is going to be Tapu Fini. Now, this was a really, really, really difficult set for me to make. Like, it was so difficult to see the Mons I had to check with this set. Because I just don't, I can't tell what 6 he's going to bring and what I'm going to need on this set. Um, Moonblast does a lot to most of his Mons, but I'm hoping if I can catch uh, Aegislash on a switch and knock off its item. Or, like, Shadow Ball does a lot to Hatterene, does a lot to Stami, does a lot to Aegislash. Um... Surf and Moonblast is just stab. Surf is just there basically also mainly just in case Rhyperior comes in and it, it starts being a problem. Although I really, really doubt he brings Rhyperior in this matchup. Like it's it's got a really rough matchup in my opinion, like defensively. It doesn't really come in unless it's on a free switch in and he's got other mons for those free switch in. So I really doubt Rhyperior comes here. Um he's got a lot of mons that are knockoff bait, so I'm hoping that's where we can get the knockoff on. I had to debate on knockoff versus draining kiss and I chose knockoff. Um, also, shout out Critic, Targo, and Clay for the help of the builder. This was probably one of the toughest builders I had to do because I just ha I kept second guessing myself a lot in this game because of the num sheer number of setup threats, the se sheer snowball potential of his team. Uh, so now I'm just gonna jump into the game, guys. Now jumping into the game, guys. As you can see, I am shocked to not see Galarian Zapdos, considering that uh, it. I did not really have resist. I guess he was worried about the fact that I did have like, you know, Weavile, Glasgow, Rotom, which either revenged it or took a hit. So I guess that's probably why he didn't bring it, but he did bring the Hail Core. I am glad to not see um, the Galarian Zapdos as well as not see Rhyperior, because Rhyperior, I realized later, was a little bit annoying if it just came in on my team, just a little bit, but like, not too much. We do see the three major setup threats in, on the left hand side with Gyarados, Mega, Dragonite, and Age Slash. And he does also have the Stami, which I'm assuming based on this team comp, it's gotta be Scarf, Scarf Stami. Uh, either which way, I can freely lead Victini here, because I think Victini does not have a bad matchup here other than Stami. And if he's gonna lead Stami, we will know straight away if he's Scarf. So, I'm gonna lead Victini. And he does lead the Gyarados. Uh, the reason I say we'll know he's Scarf is because if he stays in, he ha he has to scout for Scarf Victini if he's not Scarf. If he stays in and just clicks for turn, we know he's definitely Scarf. So we do have Gyarados in on Victini here. He's probably gonna switch out, but I'm still gonna click the Will O Wisp as he does go straight into a Bomber Snow and we get the early Will O Wisp. Now here, I did think about this for a moment because I was just like, you know what? Should I just take the kill on a Bomber Snow right now? Um, you're gonna see we don't see an item on Obama Snow, so it could be, could be Oka Berry, but I don't think even Oka Berry. I don't think live Blue Flare from Modest Victini. I might be wrong, based on his spread. I don't know if it actually lived, but the question is we're then letting in Octavish. 
and if we're going to let an Arctovish, it's going to start chipping down Feeny, which is going to be really annoying for us. At the same time, uh, do I really want to let him get free chip on Mega Scizor right now? Because this thing is just going to sit here and be annoying. So this was a move, honestly, I wish I thought through more in the game, but I didn't. And I'm going to click Blue Flare and we're going to take out Obama Snow first up. He does go into the Arctovish as expected. But uh, here, obviously, my switch in is going to be Dapu Fini. He's going for the Fishes Rend, which, you know, does do, does do a decent chunk. But the annoying thing is the hail killing our recovery is just really annoying here. But at the same time, we can just click Knock Off here. If he's AV, we'll get rid of it. But turns out he's Expert Belt. And we do get rid of the expert belt on this thing which probably I'm not sure if it actually lets us take another hit if I'm being honest but uh, we now find ourselves in a bit of a precarious position you know um, I feel like maybe once I switched in the first time I should have switched out again to preserve Tapu Fini so I feel like that was definitely a little bit of a misplay but I was just afraid because Scizor is not yet mega yet and uh, the other big issue is if um, like right now I find myself in a really bad position because he can freely click Freshest Rend whereas I really don't have a switch in like I don't want Rotom if he clicks Freeze Dry Rotom will die and I really don't have another switch in so right now the unfortunate thing is here we're weakening our Aegislash and Dragonite matchups but mostly our Aegislash matchup and we're probably gonna have to give him Feeny here for damage and that is what we end up doing he does click the Freshest Rend he does get the higher roll. We do get a spectacular drop, which does not matter too much. But Tapu Fini goes down, and we just go straight into Scizor because I know for a fact with Bullet Punch going first, Fisher Strand is not really doing anything to us. And uh, we do get the nice Bullet Punch chip off. He does get a little bit of damage with Fisher Strand and Hail, and it was Icy Rock on Obama Snow, which is going to actually give him quite a bit of chip on Mega Scizor here, which is very annoying for us. But we are. We have taken out his hail core seven turns in, but unfortunately, we've also lost Tapu Fini and lost a little bit of chip on Scizor. Uh, he does go into Stami here, and here this turn I took forever. As you can as you can see, I, I paused too late. He does click the Thunderbolt. I s he needed a really high roll Hydro Pump to kill us. That was the only way. I think it was near max roll or max roll to kill us, unless he was modest, which I don't think he was. Um, and I just did not at this point want to give anything else up. I did not want to give him Victini because I still think Victini could easily win with these three. Um, I still did not want to give him Weavile, I did not want to give him Gliscor, Ice Beam from Life Orb, Analytic 100% killed Rotom Wash. I just did not want to take the risk. To be honest, I don't know why he quite clicked Thunderbolt here. Um, I, I think the water stab move was always the play, but I'm not sure why he clicked Thunderbolt here. But here, Mega Scizor is going to take out Stami, which is absolutely brilliant for us now because now we are faster than the rest of his team. And uh, I'm surprised he came in without a Scarfer, but I guess that's why he had the Icy Rock for the speed control. He does go into Gyarados here, but I'm gonna go hard into Rotom Mo. Uh, he does click the Crunch, which does quite a bit of damage, quite a good bit of chip, but. Uh, as you're going to see, I'm going to click Thunderbolt here because I'm not risking him clicking D-Dance because, see, I could click Volt Switch there, but the main thing for me there is that if I click Volt Switch and then he D-Danced, I was in a bad position. So I did not want that. I knew if he if he switched out, I could break multi-scale, I could do a good amount of chip to Age Slash. I wasn't losing much else out of the turn. He does go into Dragon Knight hard here and I just go straight into Gluscore because I know he's not gonna do anything to us at plus one. Even with Ice Punch, does I'm, I'm pretty sure we live in Ice Punch. Um, I'm not. I, I actually have to double check the cap. But either way, here I know I have to click Toxic. I don't have another play here. But uh, the fact that Rotom Mo broke uh, Multi Scale is the most important thing because I can just revenge him with Weavile even if we lose Gliscor here. Uh, he does switch out on the Toxic, which is quite the play if you ask me. Um, here, I'm going to get up the Stealth Rocks as he does reveal himself to be Special Age Slash. But he is not mo he is not Specs. That is not Specs damage. Um, I'm not sure if he got a low roll or if that's Spell Tag. 
because if we spell tag i'm pretty sure this was uh, 65 was a mid to mid low roll but here obviously i'm just going to click protect once again just to get a little bit of toxic orb recovery uh he goes back into dragonite i'm going to click the toxic he's going to dragon dance up i'm not too concerned at this stage um I go hard into Scizor here because I feel like I can just like toxic stall him back out if I come back. I don't want to get take more damage on Gliscor. We do get beautiful chip with our bullet punch as we go down. And Dragon Knight is now down to 10%. Now here is where I, I really misplay. Because all I needed to do here was go into Gliscor and click protect. That's all I needed to do. Uh, actually, I was a little bit afraid. Actually, no. The reason I didn't make that play was I was afraid if he was uh, roost. That's why I didn't make the play. The reason I didn't make that play was because I was afraid if he was roost. Because he only showed us two moves. He's, he's more than likely dual wing beat and roost. So here I'm going to go hard into Weavil and I'm just going to click the ice shard. It should be straightforward. He is a, he is not a Yachi Berry either which way. He was heavy duty boots. He didn't take rock ship. But he reveals the extreme speed, which is really good tech on his part. And it's going to, while we're going to take him out with the Ice Shard, we will die to life orb recoil with Viva, which is really unfortunate. But it is what it is. Um, but now it's 2v3. I send in Rotom Mo here. I took a lot of time before the switch in because I was like, what is the ways I can lose from him? The ways I can lose. One, I proc an unnecessary weakness policy with Gliscor. Two on on each slash. Two, I miss a Willow Wisp on Dra Gyarados as it clicks Dragon Dance twice. So I just thought, you know what, Rotamo, you're my best answer here. If he goes Age Slash, so be it. I will both switch out. But uh, he chooses to go into Gyarados, and here I don't care. I'm just gonna click T Bolt. I'm not risking a Leaf Storm miss. I know T Bolt didn't kill. As he does click the Crunch, he does not kill us. And we do take out Gyarados Mega here with Rotamo, which is huge. So he's down to the last Mon. I'm assuming, more than assuming at this point, that this is set up Age Slash. So I have to be really careful if he's SD. If he's got... Sorry, not if he's SD, sorry. If he's Autotomized Weakness Policy, I have to be really careful. Either which way, I'm locked in Thunderbolt. I'm going to click Thunderbolt and let him kill me. As he does click the Autotomize here. And uh, he's going to now pick us off with the Shadow Sneak. So it is down to two mans and age slash. I am afraid to go Victini here because Victini needs like him to min roll for me to live. At the same time, Gliscor is just out of, out of range and I can protect further to get some HP back. Um, we do click the protect. He does click the shadow ball. We're up to 85. Now here I've got a decision to make. If he's not spell tag, if he's weakness policy, I, I I mean I will kill it 50%. No matter what, I will kill it 50% with Earthquake. But if he crits me, I'm dead. So I'm gonna make the play here to sack Victini. So that I can come back in, click protect, and get some HP back on Gliscor to guarantee that I'm out of crit range. Crit range was 81 to 96 from Modest Max, and we're now at 97. So this is the moment, everybody. This is the moment. The whole season's come down to... Will he crit us? Is he spell tag? Like he's run in previous games, or... Like, I, the, the main thing is that if it's spell tag, crit will definitely kill us. But uh, either which way, this is the moment that's going to determine the championship for UPA Season 1. And he does not kill us. He does get the spadef drop. But we are going to take out Age Slash and the Chen and the Chennai Chandelors are gonna pick up another championship that is UPA Showdown Season 1. This was a hell of a game. GG's to Moj. I was just Oh my god, I can't even begin to state how hyped I was at winning this. Um this was really I feel like I definitely had some misplays this game. But to the best, I tried to play the end game to the best of my abilities, and, I, and this is such an offensive team. Like, I consider myself to be a, like a deep, like a, a player who likes putting on pressure. But like, this team was just every single turn. It's just the constant, constant, incessant pressure. You just have to be on your toes all the time. But uh, GG's to Moj. I, I, 
like he's had a great season he's like i i was going through some of his replays and basically he lost one game all season and that was i think with a dual wing beat miss like outside of that i don't think he's miss i, I think the only other loss he had was the meme game against brownie where brownie brought um belly drum slow bro either which way guys uh this has been a really great run to the title and um i'm really grateful to all the people who helped me out um I'm hoping this this is going to be our last league for a while which is something I haven't gone into but uh we're going to be taking a break. I did contemplate whether this would be my last draft league but um I did talk to a few people who just told me just convince me to just take a break and then revisit the format at a later date. So this will be our last upload at least with regards to draft leagues for a while. But it is great to go out with a win and it's great to go out with a ship like this. Um Thanks to the mod squad for getting this going and uh, accepting me all you. So, that's going to be it for me guys. So, this is TRT77 and this is me signing off.